सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन टू नेवर मिस एनी अपडेट फ्रॉम राउज आई एस स्टडी सर्कल ज्वाइन द ओनली ऑफिशियल टेलीग्राम चैनल ऑफ राउज आई एस स्टडी सर्कल टू गेट द रेलिवेंट मटीरियल्स एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट अपडेट्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डेली न्यूज सिंप्लीफाइड द वॉट वाई एंड हाउ ऑफ द न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस फ्रॉम द सिविल सर्विस एग्जामिनेशन परस्पेक्टिव सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द हिंदू डेली एडिशन डेटेड अप्रिल थ्री ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू and some important topics from the indian express explain section of the last week the topics to be discussed have been displayed on your screen and the time stamping of the same has been provided in the description box below now let us start our detailed discussion of today's session our first topic is in relation to the recently signed indo australian trade deal now this topic is very important for the upsc examinations because of multiple reasons Reason one: This topic directly falls under the General Studies Paper Two section of the Bilateral, Regional, and Global Groupings and Agreements. Reason two: This is one of the very first agreements signed by India with some developed country. Reason three: India and Australian relations are very important from the economic as well as strategic point of view for India as well as Australia. And reason four. India and Australia both lie in the Indo-Pacific region and we all know that in recent years Indo-Pacific diplomacy has gained a lot of significance in the backdrop of rising China US China conflicts as well as the rising stakes of countries like India Australia and Japan so because of all these reasons this topic becomes very important for the UPSC mains perspective The context of this very article is that recently India and Australia have signed economic cooperation and trade agreement with an intention to double the bilateral trade to 50 billion dollars in 5 years. The relations are not restricted to the narrow domains of the trade it also includes the services part and that is why it also focuses on easing the movement of people goods and services across the border. so as we have discussed that india australia ecta is the first trade agreement of india with any of the developed country this agreement has taken place after more than a decade and it is an all encompasses and holistic agreement which deals with the entire gamut of the bilateral economic and commercial relations it deals with multiple areas like trades in goods rules of origin trades in services technical barriers to trade sanitary and phytosanitary barriers dispute settlements etc so in a way this economic cooperation and trade agreement is a holistic agreement now we all know that any economic relation is built on two important parameters one is the trade in goods and other is the trade in services so that is why in a very brief manner we will look at certain impacts or benefits of this agreement for india as well as australia As far as the trade in goods is concerned India will benefit from the preferential market access which is provided by Australia to the Indian players Similarly Indian government has also provided a preferential access to the Australian players but the point is that India has strength in certain areas and Australia has strength in the other areas and that is why this mutual relationship is going to benefit both the countries For example The Australian market will be made ready for India for the products like gems and jewelry, textiles, leather, footwear, furniture, food and agricultural products, engineering products, automobiles. So India commands its own position in all these areas. On the other hand, Australia commands dominance in areas like primary raw materials as well as intermediaries such as coal, mineral ores and wines. now as far as the services is concerned we all know the strength of india in terms of service exports and that is why the australia has offered wide ranging commitments in service sectors for the indian interests in areas of business services health education audio visual etc and in this very line australia has provided certain key offers for example special quota for the chefs and the yoga teachers post study work visa for 2 to 4 years for the indian students and on the other hand india has offered market access to australian services like business services communication services construction and related engineering services 
so this particular column shows you that this will be going to be a mutually beneficial relationship between india and australia in terms of goods as well as in terms of services now we will look at certain significance of australia to india first is the economic significance the bilateral trade of india and australia annually is around 25 billion dollars that is why both the countries are now aiming to take this trade to dollar 50 billions as we have already discussed second australia presently is a key partner to the india's make in india initiative and it also has a very high potential to remain a key partner in future also because it provide a lot of investment opportunities for the indian players in mining and energy industry of australia further we all know that india continuously struggle with the issues of finances and capital and in this very sense india can leverage its national investment and infrastructure fund which can offer an investment opportunities to australian investment funds the second important area of the significance for india is the energy sector we all know that australia is a huge source of coal uranium as well as natural gas now in present times we all are aware about the issues which india is facing in terms of getting oil from russia in the backdrop of russia ukrainian war so that is why india needs to diversify its energy sources in terms of the countries also the third important aspect of cooperation is the maritime order now both the countries are democratic in nature and they share a common wisdom of free open inclusive and rule based indo pacific region the next important aspect is defense we all know that because of the unilateral and dominant increase and expansionism of china has put the countries of indo pacific rim together whereby we come across four major countries like india australia japan and us and all these countries have taken an important step of formation of quad and india as well as australia are also committed to the principles of multilateralism the last important aspect is the people to people contacts now australia has the presence of strong diaspora of indian population further india is the second largest source of international students in australia also and we have discussed that how australia and india are going to be mutually beneficial for each other So this particular topic has appeared in today's the Hindu Daily edition at page number one. This topic is in relation to the kangaroo species recently found in the Indian forests, and that is why this topic becomes very important because this is something unusual as we all know that kangaroos are not the native species not only of the India but of the entire Asian continent. Kangaroos are not native to the Asian continent, so that is why let us begin the discussion. The context of this very topic is that recently the forest officials of the Bakuntpur Forest Division now this Bakuntpur forest lies in the state of West Bengal they got the report from the local villagers local people that the local people have seen certain kangaroos hopping about in their forests so obviously initially the forest officials did not believe but later on when they investigated this case they found that the news as reported by the local people was true as far as the upsc scheme of syllabus is concerned this topic is mostly relevant from the prelims point of view because the preliminary examination syllabus mentions this topic general issues on environmental ecology and biodiversity which do not require subject specialization this means that you do not have to go very deeper into the topic into the science and zoological aspects of the kangaroo but you only have to read that much amount of information which is relevant for the upsc civil service examination and in this regard first of all we need to be aware about the iucn status of the kangaroo species so as far as the iucn red list is concerned these western grey kangaroo species fall under the least concerned category now if you go in this particular direction you can see the increase in the severity of the threatenedness of multiple wildlife species because as soon as the population gets totally destructed the species enter into the group of extinct now many species 
फॉल अंडर दी वलनरेबल एंडेंजर्ड और क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड कैटेगरी बट एज फार एज दी वेस्टर्न ग्रे कंगारूज आर कंसर्न दीज स्पीशीज आर दी लीस्ट कंसर्न स्पीशीज ऑफ आई यू सी एन एंड इन दी बिग नेम एज वी डिस्कस दैट दीज आर नॉट दी नेटिव स्पीशीज ऑफ द एशियन कॉन्टिनेंट सो द क्वेश्चन अराइज इज दैट वेयर आर दीज स्पीशीज फाउंड सो दीज स्पीशीज आर दी नेटिव ऑफ द ऑस्ट्रेलियन कॉन्टिनेंट नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर मैप शोज द जोग्राफिकल रेंज ऑफ द कंगारूज नेटिवनेस इन द ऑस्ट्रेलियन पार्ट एंड एज फार एज देयर नेचुरल हैबिटैट इज कंसर्न दीज स्पीशीज आर मोस्टली फाउंड इन द फॉरेस्ट सवाना ग्रास लैंडस श्रब लैंडस एंड इवन सम आर्टिफिशियल टेरेन्स नाउ इफ यू क्लोजली अगेन लुक एट द वर्ड मैंशन इन द टॉपिक दैट इज द जे ओ ई वाई एस जॉयस नाउ दीज आर द बेबी मार्सुपियल्स now these marsupials what are these marsupials these are animals which keep their babies in their haunches the pouches for example you must have seen kangaroo species which keep their babies in a pocket which is attached to their stomach similarly there is one more animal species that is known as koalas so all these species which keep their baby in their pouches the natural pockets which are attached with their stomach are known as marsupials and the baby marsupials are known as joys so this was a very brief topic because this was mostly from the film's point of view the only important thing is that baikundpur forest lies in the state of west bengal as far as the iucn red list is concerned western grey kangaroos are the least concerned category they are the native species of australian continent and are found in the natural habitat of the forests savanna grasslands as well as shrublands so now let us move towards our indian express explained section and we'll discuss some of the important topics here our first topic is in relation to the science and tech which deals with the basic difference between two terms which many a times is used simultaneously connoting similar meanings these two terms are genome editing and genetically modified technology now both these terms are used interchangeably however there is a slight technical difference between genome editing and genetic modification so in today's session we will discuss about this basic difference only the context of this particular news article is that recently government has come up with the notification to exempt the site directed nucleus that is sdn1 and 2 genomes and instead it would rely on the reports of the institutional bio safety committee to exclude the exogenous genetic materials now despite the fact that the context seems very technical in nature however in today's session i'll try to make it very simple for you to make you understand that what this news article talks about and what are the multiple points and dimensions associated with this particular topic so first of all you must understand that how gene editing takes place now depending upon the nature of the edit this whole process is carried out in three stages there are three stages three categories and these three categories are sdn1 sdn2 and sdn3 now we'll understand this with the help of a diagram now this is sdn1 this is sdn2 and this is sdn3 and let us say that this was the the original gene of some organism now if you closely analyze the difference between the sdn1 and sdn2 with respect to the sdn3 you will closely observe that in these two parts no foreign gene is inserted but if you closely look in this part there is this foreign material which is added in the original gene so what is happening over here let us discuss it in little bit detail this was the original gene you have applied the molecular scissors and you have cut this gene into two parts now this is the gene which is already been cut that means that you have modified the gene now this can take place in three categories first is the same thing that this is the gene which has been cut but no foreign substance is added here so that is why it says that sdn1 introduces the changes in the host genomes dna through small insertions or deletions without introduction any foreign genetic material here there is no foreign genetic material now come to sdn2 now what sdn2 is doing that sdn2 has cut some part from the original gene modified this particular part 
but without using any foreign gene okay so this star symbol shows this original gene is modified and then the modified part is again attached to the original gene and thus the picture becomes like this now this is the modified part in the original gene itself and then again attached to the gap which was left after cutting so this is sdn2 now come to the sdn3 this is the targeted insertions that means now you have cut this particular this original gene and you have introduced this one foreign substance into it and that is why this is a red color between the original gene now here the foreign substance is being included so this is sdn3 now sdn1 and sdn2 because here no foreign substances are being used here just here there is just a modification of the original gene the end result is indistinguishable from the conventionally bred crop varieties but on the other hand sdn3 process which involves the larger dna elements or full length genes of foreign origin makes the original gene altogether a different gene clear so here lies the basic difference between the genetically modification and genetic engineering now genetically modified organisms that is gmos involve the modification of the genetic material of the host by introduction of a foreign genetic material now just recall some genetically modified crop like bt cotton what were we doing in bt cotton we were using the bacteria known as bacillus thuringiensis and we were inserting the gene of that particular bacteria into the crop of cotton so that it can fight with the disease so again we have here used the foreign material and that is why we call these crops as genetically modified crops but now we are talking about genome editing here you are not using any foreign substance you are just editing the genome of some crop it does not involve the introduction of the foreign genetic material clear so now we'll come to the regulatory aspects now what was done earlier is that whenever you have to introduce some genetically modified crops so the main body to regulate all this process was the genetical engineering appraisal committee that is geac but the process to grant this removal was very cumbersome and now because we know that there is a difference between genetically modified crops and genetically engineered crops we have separated the regulatory mechanisms for these two things and that is and now you can understand the context of this very article in a better way the context says that the notification has exempted the sdn1 and sdn2 genomes that is the genetically engineered and instead it would rely on the reports of the institutional biosafety committee so there are several competent authorities under the rules of 1989 that is the rules for manufacture use import export and storage of hazardous microorganisms genetically engineered organisms or cells so these are the competent authorities first is the recombinant dna advisory committee which is which has an advisory role then we have three committees first is the genetically engineering appraisal committee second is the review committee on genetic manipulation and third is the institutional biosafety committee now see again these two committees are different and now we know that they have different functions all these three committees have regulatory role next we have at the state level the state biotechnology coordination committee and at the district level we have district level committee now at the state and the district level these committees have only the monitoring role so i hope that you have got the basic difference between the genome editing and the genetic modification the difference is on the basis of the insertion of foreign substance this topic is again from the indian express explain section and is in relation to the dalong community of the state of tripura the context of this very topic is that dalongs which is a very small community of around 11000 people in tripura was recently included in the list of the scheduled tribes after the lok sabha passed the constitution scheduled tribes order amendment bill 2022 earlier this community was not having a separate unique identity as scheduled tribe in the list of multiple scheduled tribes of the state 
but recently it has been included and that is why this topic becomes very important from the UPSC's perspective. If you go by the previous year analysis of the questions, in 2014 there were two questions asked with reference to the tribes. So analyzing these very questions will help you to guide and make your own path that how can you prepare and what information is relevant as far as the tribes are concerned. Let us look at the question asked in UPSC 2014. The question said that every year a month long ecologically important campaign or festival is held during which certain communities or tribes plant the saplings of fruit bearing trees. Which of the following are such communities or tribes? So the idea of this particular question is activity oriented. That is the question is asked on the theme of the activity which is done by various tribes. So that means that whenever you prepare some tribes their unique activities are also to be prepared. As far as this particular question is concerned option B that is Gond and Korku tribes is the correct answer. Now let us look at this question also. The question said that with reference to the Changpa community of India consider the following statements. You are given three statements. The first is location based. The statement says that they live mainly in the state of Uttarakhand. The second is activity based. That is they rear the Pashmina goats that yield a fine bull. And third is associated with the polity or governance aspect that is the legislative part. The statement says that they are kept in the category of scheduled tribes. So just think that what these two questions are guiding you in order to prepare your tribes. First you must be aware about the location of the tribes. Second you must be aware about the unique activity if any of those particular tribes. And third is that whether they have any legitimate or legislative status or not. As far as this particular question is concerned the option B again is the correct answer. So in this very line for the Darlong communities we will prepare certain things. We will also look at some factual information related to the other tribes which thrive in the state of Tripura. So first of all as far as the Darlong communities is concerned though these are tribal communities but they have high prevalence of education, cultural activities as well as the employment status. A lot of members of the Dalong communities are serving in different high positions in the local administration. Next as we have already discussed that these tribes were not given a special certificate of the scheduled tribes. They were considered as a generic tribes under the Kuki community. Now this particular list provide you with the other tribes also which are settled in the state of Tripura. So this is a factual information and try to remember the names of these tribes because some of the tribes are very important. So let us look at some important tribes. First is the Tripuri tribe also known as Dev Burma tribe. Second is the Ryangs tribe also known as Bruce. Third is Jamatia. Fourth is Nuatia. Next Chakma tribe is also very important. Lushai tribes are important. Kukis are important because Kukis also have their relevance when we are learning about the Dalong communities because we have discussed that Dalong communities were considered as a generic tribe under the Kuki community. Next we have Santhals and Bhils also now this is very important because generally Santhal and Bhil tribal areas are considered as the central Indian areas. So these tribes are also present in the state of Tripura. Then Bhutias are also there. Chaimars also known as Sarmai are also there. Garo, Khasi, Lepchas these three tribes are very famous. Halam is also famous. And then we have certain tribes having almost similar names. For example Ranglong, Bong, Korbong, Harbong and Bongche. So these are the names of some of the important tribes in Tripura. And this is purely factual in nature so you must remember these tribes because this can help you in selection or eliminating certain options as far as the questions of tribes are concerned. Now this topic is in relation to the Raja Ravi Verma and falls under the section of history as well as the culture. So again this section that history and culture section is particularly very relevant as far as the UPSC 
prelims examination is concerned and mostly this topic is very factual in nature so that is why in today's session we will look at some of the important facts related to raja ravi verma now raja ravi verma is mostly known for his artistic sensibilities as he is one of the greatest painters of the indian history so in this very regard we will look at certain key facts and important works of raja ravi verma as far as this particular article which is there in the indian express explain section is concerned this topic has appeared in the context that recently one of the very significant paintings of raja ravi verma of draupadi vastra haran that is from the story of mahabharata will be going for the auction for the first time and as you can see here that raja ravi verma is called as the father of the modern indian art now the time period of raja ravi verma is from 1848 to 1906 and his birthplace is kerala now when we look at the kerala from the ancient perspective the important kingdom which comes to our mind is travancore kingdom so raja ravi verma is associated with the royal family of the travancore kingdom so raja ravi verma was trained under two again important personalities one of those personality was the royal painter in the travancore kingdom that is rama swami naidu and the other important guru of raja ravi verma was the dutch artist theodor jensen the main specialization of the raja ravi verma's painting was that he was specialized in using the oil and water paints he combined the european artistic skills which was based on the principle of realism with the indian sensibilities further he was also very much inspired by the indian literature on dance and drama and because of his sophistication and his maturity in his paintings his art he has won three gold medals at the world's columbian exposition in chicago 1893 Further he also opened the lithographic press in Bombay in 1894 to take his art to the masses that means that his paintings were not just restricted within the narrow boundaries of the royal kingdom he aimed to make his art visible and accessible to the masses and that is why he opened the lithographic press in Bombay and this was one of the most significant contribution of raja ravi verma's in making the royal art accessible to the common people because of this press the involvement of the common people grew multifold and people became much aware about the fine arts defined artistic tastes and the specialities of the india's art and paintings some of the important work of raja ravi verma are enlisted as here you have to remember these particular names because this again is factual information so for you people i am reciting these names first important work is shakuntala second nayar lady adorning her hair third there comes papa fourth galaxy of musicians fifth damayanti talking with a swan and sixth maharaj shivaji so these six are some of the important works of king ravi verma further in modern times to make us more aware about the achievements of the raja ravi mama the bollywood has also taken an important step in 2014 hindi language film that is rang rasiya came on the box office which showcased the important features of raja ravi mama's art so now is the time for the question of the day the question from the yesterday's dns is in front of you consider the following statements related to the narcotic drug and psychotropic substances act 1985 there are two statements given and you have to find the correct statement out of the given statements the statement one says this act prohibits the cultivation and manufacture of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances for all the purposes now this statement is incorrect because all the purposes are not prohibited it can be manufactured or cultivated for medicinal purposes The statement 2 says that the act is implemented by Narcotics Control Bureau which functions under the Union Home Ministry. This statement is correct. So that is why option B that is two only is the correct answer. The question from today's DNS is in relation to the biotechnology. The question says with reference to the agriculture in India how can the technique of genome sequencing often seen in the news be used in the immediate future? There are three statements given. 
and again you have to find the correct statement. First statement is genome sequencing can be used to identify genetic markers of the disease resistance and drought tolerance in various crop plants. The statement 2 says this technique helps in reducing the time required to develop new varieties of crop plants. The statement 3 says it can be used to decipher the host pathogen relationships in crops. Option A is 1 only, option B 2 and 3 only, option C 1 and 3 only or option D 1, 2 and 3. So that's all for today. All the very best. Study hard.